Today we are going to build seven different types of pipe terrain. Well, the first one is kind of a two-parter. I used a pretty large variety of materials and tools to build these pipes, so hopefully this gives you a few ideas for some cheap terrain. We are going to start with the simpler projects. The ones later on in the video are a bit more time consuming to build and require more tools. If you want a specific tutorial, feel free to skip around. If not, just sit back and enjoy the video. First up, we have pen pipes. You're gonna need a lot of pens for this project. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy a bunch of these pens. Honestly, pens are pretty easy to round up if you're trying. You probably have some in the back of a drawer somewhere. And if not, you probably have some relatives or friends who do. Maybe there's an ample supply at work that's just sitting around. Maybe there's a job fair nearby. I don't care where you get your pens, just know you're gonna need some pens for this project. Specifically these two types of pens, with a nice basic cylinder shape. Just pop off the tops and the bottoms and throw them in your bits box. If your pens happen to be used up, the inner piece that holds the ink is a totally viable pipe option as well. These pens were not used up unfortunately. Honestly, I have more pens than I could ever possibly use, so this is at least better than throwing them away. So with our pen pipes ready, we're gonna give them a good sanding. This removes any of those pesky logos and helps them take the paint better. Also, at this point, make sure the pen tubes are the same size. I had to cut a little bit off of a few of these to make sure that they all lined up. Next, lay down a sheet of wax paper and super glue the pens together like this. I used a pen top to spread the glue out, these are going to stack on top of each other, so it's important to make sure that the super glue isn't globbed up on the top pipes because those pipes are going to be visible. Originally, I was going to paint these gray, but I later decided to use metallic spray paint instead. I will say that it's easier to get the paint in between the pipes if you spray paint them before gluing these layers together. So I had these wooden stir sticks that I stained for a previous project, and I decided to use them as stands for these pipes. But first I mixed up a bluish green wash to give these stir sticks a treated lumber look. And there you go, part one done. It's a pretty similar process for these next pen pipes, but this time we're gonna stack them a little differently and give them a rusty look. Glue them together in groups of five, to get that rusty look, I went with a dark walnut base coat for these. I used a large flat brush and I painted some streaks of burnt umber across the pipes. And I also kind of dabbed that around sporadically. Then I added some lava orange to the burnt umber. I used a stir stick to get a nice straight line on the inside and the outside of these pipes, where I thought the water would have probably pooled. Then I cut up some more stained wooden pieces and glued everything together. And once again, I added a wash to give it that nice treated lumber look. The cool thing about these pipes is that they can be used as cover or they can be stacked to block line of sight completely. So there's two different versions of pen pipes for you. On to pipe design number two. For the next pipe project, we're gonna be using some locally sourced plastic stir straws. You could also use WD-40 straws if you have a few. They're pretty much the same thing, but you will need quite a few. For this stack, I used 51 plastic stir straws. I super glued the stir straws together in a hexagonal shape that like the previous project can be used for trooper cover or stacked to a block line of sight completely. To hide that super glue haze, I spray painted these red and then I glued some pre-bent zip ties around them. Honestly, these zip ties are kind of a pain to work with, and I would say maybe try using construction paper or even thin strips of container plastic instead of these, painted silver. I've seen some people use jewelry chains for this. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I think a strap looks a little more realistic. I decided to do a red and blue version of these pipes. They kind of remind me of PEX pipes. And that's pretty much it for this project. On to pipe number three. Next up, we're going to make a pipe stack using drinking straws. People just love their single-use plastic here in the States, and if you start collecting them, these pile up pretty quickly. Initially, I was hesitant to use these since they're so flimsy, but if you pile them the right way, it's really not that big of a deal. Thank you. 
After spray painting these and cutting them to length, I built an I-beam frame to stack them in. And for that I used stir sticks and wood glue. I found the best way to do this was to use some tweezers to hold the centerpiece in place. Once these little eye beams were dry, I gave them a coat of Mod Podge. Then I super glued them together and spray painted them brown for a rusty base coat. Then I just piled the pipes into the frame randomly. I used a miter box to keep everything straight while I glued the pieces together. These pipes are low enough for a trooper to shoot over, but I made sure to make the frame high enough that if I wanted to, I could pile the pipes all the way up and completely block line of sight. Once I get some more straws collected, I'll probably build some full versions of these. After some touch up with the metallic spray paint, I layered some rust effects onto the frame. For this, I just mixed up some burnt umber and lava orange. Then I just kept adding a little bit more orange with each layer until I was happy with the look. Next we're going to make some large concrete drain tubes out of PVC. This project does require some power tools. So while I was gathering pipes for this project, I found these offcuts at my parents' house. I don't know what my dad used these for, nor did I ask, but they did require some washing. They just had some dirt on them. I'm pretty sure it was just dirt. The first thing I had to do was get these rough cuts nice and straight. With the necessary PPE, I set up this makeshift jig to get a 90 degree cut on the ends of these pipes. And then I also cut them to a pretty similar length. I tried to remove as little as possible while I was cutting them because they were already pretty short. Unfortunately, a few of them were just too short to use. So if you look at concrete pipes, they have these lips on the end that kind of socket together. And to create that effect, I used my table saw to cut a beveled edge around one side of each pipe. I couldn't think of a good way to cut the inner bevel out, so I just skipped that part. I think just having that outer bevel sells the look well enough. After a quick sanding, I primed them with a satin fossil color. So these are kind of meant to be sitting around at a construction site, and I wanted them to sit pretty flush with the table, so I used poster board as a base. I traced them out and cut them, and then I super glued the pipes to the bases. Then I layered some wood glue on the top side of the poster board, and I covered that with sand. If you layer the sand high enough with these particular pipes, a trooper can stand on the inside pretty easily. So I made sure to do that. Once that first coat was dry, I decided to cover the pipes in grout. So first I covered them with watered down PVA, and then I just dipped them into a bin of grout. And I used my fingers to smooth out the grout and tap off the excess. I also used a stir stick to carve out that beveled edge. We want that to be nice and pronounced. After a heavy coat of stone gray, I thought I had created a pretty convincing concrete effect. But they were just too clean. So using various shades of brown, I dirtied them up. And I also made some wooden platforms to sit on top of the vertical pipes using stir sticks. And like in the previous projects, I used a wash to create a treated lumber effect on the wood. And there you have it, large concrete pipes. You can also make concrete pipes out of cardboard tubes. When it comes to cardboard tubes, the thicker the better. These shorter tubes came from rolls of stickers at work. If you can get your hands on these thick tubes, they are perfect for this. The longer tube is a bit thinner, but we're gonna see if we can make that work anyway. I cut the long tube into three shorter tubes that we are gonna call the stack. Then I cut out some poster board bases for these pipes to sit on. 
I decided to try wrapping poster board around the thinner pipes for the stack to create a beveled edge on each side and also to hide that helix pattern on the tube. So I measured and cut the poster board and super glued it around the stack pipes. Already you can see this wasn't the best idea. For the thicker tubes I used a razor blade and later a hobby saw to cut the beveled section off of the end, much like we did with the PVC concrete pipes, and that actually worked pretty well. Then I covered these pipes in watered down PVA and rolled them in grout, also similar to the PVA pipes. I will say you could probably use baking soda for this instead, it's probably less messy. I patted down the grout with my fingers and tapped off the excess. And most importantly, I made sure to remove the grout from that beveled lip and I used a stir stick to do that. Once these pipes were dry, I super glued them to their poster board bases. For the stack, I left the top pipe off to make them easier to spray paint. I also used PVA and super glue to build up sand around the edges of the bases. And after a coat of stone gray, I glued the stack together. Then I just painted on some shades of brown to create some dirt effects. The poster board gave the pipes this crinkly look, and while it's not super noticeable, I don't think I'll be doing it this way again. Next time I think I'm gonna try wrapping construction paper around the tubes a few times, instead of just one pass with the poster board, to build it up a little more. I think that would work pretty well. I'm a pretty big fan of how these thicker tubes came out, and I will definitely be making more of them in the future. And what kind of pipe video would this be without modular pipelines? If you want some really basic looking modular pipelines, this project is for you. If you want to add some fancy frills and greebles to your pipelines, then uh, this will provide a good foundation for that. I'm using half inch CPVC and half inch PVC here, even though the CPVC is smaller, because for whatever reason, the half inch CPVC corner pieces fit up against the half inch PVC pipe pretty well. I bought 10 feet of each of these pipes and that was more than enough for this project. And I only ended up using about five feet of each, just to give you an idea. So I cut a few pieces of the PVC out in one, two, three, and four inch lengths using my handy pipe cutter, which is a must for this project. You need to have a pipe cutter. Get you, don't even try to do this without a pipe cutter. Then I cut a bunch of 11 by 16th inch pieces of CPVC out because originally I was going to glue these into the angle pieces and that was the maximum length that I could use to fit into two corner pieces. But fortunately, I realized that it made a lot more sense to just glue those pieces into the straight pieces of PVC instead. Once I had all the pieces cut out, I gave them a good sanding so they would take the paint better. I used a file and sandpaper to grind off the lettering on the corner and T pieces. And this was the most time consuming part of this project by far, but it did have to be done. I used a four inch piece of PVC as a handle to make it a little bit easier, but it was still a pretty tedious process. Once that was done, I glued the pieces together with all purpose cement. Make sure whatever glue you're using can be used for PVC and CPVC. They sound similar, but they are not the same. I glued most of these in my garage because of the fumes, so make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. The next day, when they were dry, I filed down the CPVC ends a little bit and beveled them so they would socket together a little bit easier. As I was sanding them down, I made sure to test fit each one to make sure it wasn't too tight or too loose. Once you get into the rhythm of doing this, it's pretty easy. So at this point, the pipeline was looking pretty good but it definitely needed some supports. And for that, I used a piece of scrap foam. I cut that down into one inch squares. Then I made this janky jig out of a token punch board from Star Wars Legion. These circular bits are about the size of the pipeline. So I cut out two semicircles and I used those as a guide for my hot wire cutter. Then I cut each of those blocks into three pieces.
In the end, I had 12 supports. I wanted these to look like concrete, so I roughened them up a bit and I painted them with a few coats of gray paint and Mod Podge. I started with a dark gray and I dry brushed progressively lighter grays on top of that. And just like that, I had some concrete supports. You may have noticed that I spray painted these pipes off camera. Well, now that the project's done, I gotta say it's easier to wait until you can socket everything together before spray painting. As long as you don't spray paint too heavily, the pieces aren't gonna stick together. This is a great way to paint everything but the sockets, so you don't have to worry about masking anything off. So I had a pretty big batch of pipes and I decided to split it into two different colors. I decided to paint these pipes green and white since they were the second and third choices on the community poll that I conducted. The number one choice is gonna be used for the next set of pipes. At this point, all I needed to do was add a bit of weathering. And I also felt like I needed some more corner pieces so I went out and bought some more. For the weathering, I didn't really do anything fancy. Beyond the brush flicking technique, I just slopped and smeared the paint on randomly until I thought the pipes were sufficiently dirty. I also painted a runoff effect on the supports. By the time I got to the white pipes, I was ready for this mega project to be over. Can you tell? I did not put a lot of effort into weathering these, but I still think they look pretty good. Maybe someday I'll do another video where I add more uh, details to these pipes, but for now it's just, a, it's just nice to have a, a basic pipeline that I can add into an industrial map. I think these are going to see a lot of use. Finally, we have a 3D printed modular pipeline by Custom Miniature Maker. I had to do a bit of sanding to get these to fit snugly. Once that was done, I taped off the ends and spray painted everything red, the number one choice for my pole by far. Then I painted in some of the details and gave these pipes a nice oil wash. I got these STL files for free by signing up for Custom Miniature Maker's email list. I believe they send out free STL files weekly. If you're interested in that, check them out. They have a Patreon as well. I'll leave the links down below. And there are seven different types of pipe projects for you. This was an absolute monster of a project for me. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm pretty happy with how most of these pipes came out. Hopefully you got some good ideas from this video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. That would help get this video recommended on YouTube so other people can see it. If you'd like to support the channel further, there are some links down below. Check them out. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day and I will see you later.